In this video, Jordan Peterson explains what future really is and how your consciousness interacts with the world. So, one of the things I mentioned about this picture was that there's some inference, suggestion on the part of the artist that this, this chaotic monster of the depths has this origin point. It's like the beginning of time. It's, it's, it's like that's a symbol of the infinity that stretches on before us and it emerges from that. And so, part of the initiatory process is the dissolution of the personality. And the question is, well, what state of existence exists at the level where your personality dissolves? Because you're, you see the world through your personality, and the, the world is given form through your personality, and then when it's, it starts to dissolve and disintegrate, say when you sink into depression, so that you're, you're sinking into a state that's sort of before consciousness. So, so let me tell you something that William James said about this. So it's a very difficult thing to get to, to, to communicate. It's like, and we'll, we'll touch on it a bit more when we move into constructivism. So part of the idea here is that, you, that reality itself is extracted from the unknown and the unknowable. And you, know, you do that as individuals because there's all the parts of the world that you understand. And then there's the parts of the world that you don't understand, that you can't even conceive of. But now and then you encounter them, especially when you fail. And then you interact with them. And by doing that, you make them like real and describable and experienceable. And so it's like there's this latent possibility that surrounds existence that you can interact with and pull up into actuality. And that's sort of the, that's like the action of consciousness on reality. That's why, by the way, in, in the beginning of Genesis, like in Genesis, it's the word of God that produces order from chaos, right? And so that's the, initi that's the initiation of, of reality. And then later in Genesis, God makes human beings, and he says, you're made, both of you, in the image of God. And the question is, well, what does that mean? Well, it might mean that God has two arms and two legs, but what it seems to mean more accurately is that whatever it is that makes you conscious has this divine quality, and it's capable of extracting order continually from chaos. And by doing that, by being conscious actors in the world, you're bringing about the creation of reality. And that's a remarkable thing. And, you know, there's, there's nothing... There's nothing mystical about that. You know perfectly well that you can make tomorrow one thing or another, you know. And is that free will? Well, who, who knows? That question will never be solved. But it certainly seems phenomenologically like there's an option here for you and there's an option here for you and there's an option here for you. Those are all potential. And you can just choose which one of those you want to head towards and make actual. And that's consciousness doing that. And consciousness is something we don't have a clue about. And this is William James. William James is the father of, of pragmatic philosophy, but also of modern psychology. He did a fair bit of experimentation with nitrous oxide, which is this sort of inert gas that, that, that dentists use, for example, as an analgesic, but that also has quite profound hallucinatory and mystical experience-inducing properties. And so William James used to play with this. And this is a poem he, he wrote... Um, I'll read the description, the description first from William James and then the poem. He said, Pure experience is the name which I give to the original flux of life before reflection has categorized it. Only newborn babes and persons in semi-coma from sleep, drugs, illnesses, or blows can have an experience pure in the literal sense of a that which is not yet any definite what, though ready to be all sorts of what's, full both of oneness and of manyness, but in respects that don't appear, changing throughout, yet so confusedly that its phases interpenetrate, and no points, either of distinction or of identity, can be caught. Yeah, well, it's sort of in incoherent, but what William James is referring to is, is this idea that what the ground of reality is something like a potential from, you know, a potential full of many possible actualities from which single actualities can be drawn, and that that's what consciousness is doing when it makes decisions. And it's, it's a brilliant idea, and I, I think... You know, and I expect you to take this with a grain of salt, because, I, you know, this part of what I'm telling you about, well, you may think this about a lot of what I'm telling you, is, you know, sort of out on the fringes, but the quantum mechanics believe that the, the most accurate way to portray the ground of reality is as something that's striving to manifest itself. It's not there yet. It has to be interacted with something that's a conscious observer before it takes on tangible reality. And so the ground of being seems to be something like, like a multi-dimensional potential from which many things can emerge. And I think, I actually think that is what we see when we look at the future. You know, because what the hell is the future? 
What is it? You know, we certainly treat it as if it's real. The future is a place of potential. Well, right. Well, what does that mean? Well, it means whatever it means is real enough so that you orient yourself by it. You take the future seriously. You believe that your choices bring future A or future B into being. You don't really know the limits of that. You know, like if you really got your act together, right down to the core, you know, you, you have no idea what sort of glorious future you might be able to bring into ex existence. You know, it's, a, it's an unresolved question. If you diligently work with all of your effort, you know, to perfecting the things around you, you have no idea how far you might be able to go. You know, and it's, it's a real open question, and I think that's, that's part of what human beings have to bring against the sort of horrors of existence. It's like, you have a lot of potential. And if you made the right choices and were, you know, awake and careful, God only knows what you might be able to manage. So, here's his poem. He sounds like a 60s hippie from Greenwich Village, really. It's written in like 1890. No verbiage can give it because the verbiage is other, by which he means that whatever this potential is exists in a place before articulation. Right? Once it's articulated, it's not potential. It's all of a sudden something actual. That's actually why the ancient Jews didn't want to use the name of God. You weren't allowed to name God because as soon as you named God, he was no longer God. God was the unnameable. You know, and the... And the, and the uh, and Muslims have the same sort of idea about Muhammad in many ways. It's like you don't, don't want to make a concrete representation because then you take the ideal out of the ideal space and you start to make it something that you can, like a human construction. So, you know, it's, it's an idea that's got its merit. No verbiage can give it because the verbiage is other, incoherent, coherent, the same, and it fades, and it's infinite, and it's infinite. Don't you see the difference? Don't you see the identity? Constantly opposites united. The same me telling you to write and not to write. Extreme. Something and other than that thing. Intoxication and other this than intoxication. Every attempt at betterment. Every attempt at otherment. It is. It fades forever and forever as we move. All right. We'll stop there. Obviously. <laughs>